Okay, section four is titled Vectors and Dot Products. So a dot product is kind of like multiplication. There's really two kinds of multiplication when it comes to vectors. There's what's called a dot product and what's called a cross product. We're not going to address cross products and products in this class. <clears throat> so there's the mechanism of coming up with the dot product and then there's the significance of the dot product. Where is it useful? And again, this usually relates to physics or engineering. <clears throat> So here's the definition of a dot product of a vector. So we have a vector u, which has components x, uh, u1 and u2 in the x and y directions. And we have a vector v, which has a component in the x direction, a component in the y direction. And the dot product of these two vectors is you multiply together the x components and you add them to the multiplication of the y components. So it's u1 times v1 plus u times v2. And that gives you a number. Now, u and v are vectors, so they have both a magnitude and direction. But the dot product is a scalar, because we're taking numbers here, and we are multiplying them together, and then adding the two products together. Now, the dot product has the following properties, and they're similar to what you would see in multiplication. Uh, the order of the dot product doesn't matter, so whether you do u dot v or v dot u, you get the same answer. And, and you can see the only thing that would change over here on the left-hand page is that you would have u2 times v2 first, and then well, actually you'd have v1 times u1 plus v2 times u2. But since the order of multiplication doesn't matter, then the order of dot product doesn't matter. If you have a zero vector, which has zero length and an arbitrary direction dotted with a vector, you get a zero quantity. So you always get a scalar when you take the dot product of two vectors. If you have a vector dotted with the sum of two vectors, and the sum of two vectors is a vector, what you can do is you can dot the vector u with vector v and then add it to the dot of vector u dotted with vector w. So you can do the addition, the, the vector addition first and then the dot product, or you can do the dot product and then add them. The dot product of two, the same vector with itself is the magnitude of the vector squared. Okay, so you can see if, if I were to replace u with v with u, so I'd have just have u dot, u dot u, I'd have u1 times u1 plus u2 times u2. So that's u1 squared plus u2 squared, and then um, if you square that, then you would have, well, if you had the square root of that, you would have the, mag the, the magnitude, so if you square it, you end up with the dot product. Okay. And if you have a scalar c, which is multiplied by the dot product to two vectors, you can take the scalar and multiply it by the vector u first, and then dot it with the vector v, or you can take the vector u and dot it with the scalar c times the vector v. So that's, um, those are the properties of dot products. And remember the zero vector is zero i plus zero j, or zero comma zero in the other form. Okay, now, let's say we have two vectors, vector u and vector v, and the angle between the u vector and the positive x-axis we'll call beta, and the angle between the positive x-axis and the vector v is alpha. Well, alpha minus beta is theta, which is the angle between the two vectors. Now, we did this in the previous section in the homework. We used the law of cosines, but there's a simpler way of doing that using the dot product. So it turns out the cosine of this angle theta between two vectors is equal to the dot product of the two vectors divided by the 
<coughs> magnitude of vector u times the magnitude of vector v. So when you take the dot product of two vectors, you get a scalar. So we get a scalar in the numerator. The, the magnitudes are scalars. So you end up with a scalar divided by a scalar, which gives you a scalar. And notice also from a unit perspective, if these were units of feet, we'd get feet squared in the numerator and feet squared in the denominator. And so the ratio of these two things is unitless, which is good because the cosine of theta is unitless. So if we wanted to find the th angle theta, ultimately what we do is we just have to take the inverse cosine of this expression. Inverse cosine of the cosine will give you theta. But the cosine of theta is equal to u vector dotted with the v vector divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So that's a way of finding the angle between two vectors, just knowing the vector values and not having to do any geometry or trigonometry. The only trigonometry that we have to do is take the inverse cosine using our calculator. Now, uh, to derive this expression, we need to just demonstrate something, which we did kind of in the, uh, the same problem where we use the law of cosines. So if we have a vector u goes from this point, assume that's the origin, to this point. So let me show, show an arrow. There probably is an arrow, you just can't see it. See, there's the arrow. And we have vector v. To find the vector that goes from the vector that goes from the tip of vector u to the tip of vector v is not the sum of the two. The sum of the two would be if I did this, put tip to tail. And then that would be, but the vector that goes, the vector that goes from the end of u to the end of v is u minus v. Okay, and I demonstrated this in the homework, but what we do is we take vector v and we make it into vector negative v. So all you do is take vector v and you put the arrow on the other side. So this is this vector here is negative v. This one is vector v. And then if we add vector u, we well, actually, if we add the negative of vector v to vector u, you do the normal thing. You do, you do the tip of vector, the u vector, to the tail of the negative v vector, which is here, and that's that's the answer. So the resultant of u minus v is this vector. And actually, I have the arrow on the wrong side. So it's good I did that. So this arrow represents u minus v. The, the other way would have been v minus u. But if you take u and add negative v, you get the resultant vector, which is from the tail of vector u to the tip of vector negative v. Okay. So we've got vector u, we've got vector v, we've got vector u minus v. Okay. So we'll need that in a second in trying to solve this problem. Because what you can see is that if I if I take this these two vectors and I draw a line from here to here, I've got a law of cosines problem. I've got this angle theta, so that's like angle A that we normally would do. You know, this would be side A, this would be side B, this would be angle B, this would be side C, this would be angle C. In this case, we don't need angle B or all we're going to do is use the law of cosines. So all we need is the three, the three sides, the lengths of the three sides, and we want to calculate the angle between the, the vectors. So let's derive it now. So here is this same triangle. This is, uh, I've switched these around, so it doesn't really matter in terms of I don't know why I switched it around, but I made this vector u, 
this vector v. So the vector of v minus u in this case, um, yeah, I was going to say, well, do we want to? I'm not going to make it responsible for the, the, the derivation, so just follow along. So here's the law of cosines. It says the length of this side, which is the magnitude of v minus u. So this vector v minus u, it has some x and y component. The magnitude of that side squared is equal to the magnitude of this side squared, which is a vector v, vector u, um, plus the magnitude of this side, which is going to be the magnitude of vector v squared, minus 2 times the magnitude of this vector times the magnitude of that vector times the cosine of the angle theta. Ultimately, we're going to mul we're going to solve for the cosine of theta here to get our expression. So what we do first is we replace the vector, the magnitude of vector v minus u squared with the dot product. So you get vector v dotted with vector u. Pardon me, you get vector v minus vector u dotted with v minus u. So we get v minus u dotted with v minus u. And if we multiply this out, you'll have v times these two, v times u minus v, and you're going to subtract, make sure I have this right here, um, you know, the inner and outer are going to cancel out. No, that's not, we're not doing FOIL. We're going to, we're doing this times that. So you take vector v times that, and then you take um, negative, uh, yeah, this negative here. So this negative here becomes that negative, and the u is that u, and then you have that. So we're not using FOIL. We're kind of distributing this to both terms and this to both terms. Now, if we then multiply them out, so it ultimately does end up being like FOIL. You get this times that, which is vector v dotted with vector v. Then you have this, which is going to be negative vector u dotted with vector v. And then you have the vector u times vector v dotted with vector v with a minus sign. And then you have this last part. So you're going to have a negative times a negative, which is a positive u dotted with u. Okay. This is going to be the magnitude of v. This is going to be the magnitude of u. And these add together to give me negative 2u dot v. OK, so that's So this, this is going to cancel out with this part here cancels out with that part there. So this becomes v dot v becomes the magnitude of v squared. That cancels out with this v. And the same thing for this u dot u becomes the magnitude of vector u squared. That cancels out with this magnitude. So we can see where. It, so what we're left with on the left hand side is negative 2 u vector u dotted with vector v. On the right hand side we have negative 2 times the magnitude of u, the magnitude of v cosine of theta. And if you solve for the cosine of theta, you can see the twos cancel out, and you just end up with u dot v divided by the product of these two magnitudes. Okay, so that's how you can find the angle between two vectors. Now, if the angle is 90 degrees, the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So if this is 0, the only way this can be 0 is if the dot product of u and v is 0. So that's, if two vectors are orthogonal, their dot product is a 0, because then the numerator of this expression becomes 0. The cosine is, is 0, and the cosine of 90 degrees is 0, which means they're orthogonal. So that's one way, easy way to figure out if two vectors are orthogonal is to take their dot product. So let's, let's just demonstrate this process. I'm going to pick two vectors. So let's get a piece of graph paper. And uh, let's um, 
I'm just going to make up a vector here. So let's draw one from here to there and one from here to there. So let's go to there. We'll call this vector u, call this vector v, and so vector u would be equal to 1, 2, let's make this 10, this negative 10, 10, negative 10, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, comma 3. So that's vector u. Vector v, let's count 1, 2, 3, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now if we just look at that, just eyeball it, it looks like it's a little bit less than 45 degrees, so I'm just guessing, around 40 degrees. So what we have is this expression, the cosine of theta is equal to u dot v divided by the magnitude of u, the magnitude of v. So we need to do the dot product and we need to find the magnitudes. So let's do the magnitudes first. So the magnitude of vector u is equal to the square root of 6 squared plus 3 squared. So that's 36 plus 9, square root of 45. The magnitude of v is the square root of 3 squared plus 8 squared. So that's 64 plus 9. So that's the square root of 73. Now we need u dot v, so let me just move this down a little bit. So u dot v is equal to, so here's vector u, here's vector v, and so the dot product is just 6 times 3, x components multiplied together, plus 3 times 8. So that's 18 plus 24. And you add those together and you get uh, 42. So the cosine of the angle theta cosine of theta is equal to 42 divided by the magnitude of u, which is the square root of 45, times the magnitude of v, which is the square root of 73. So turn on our calculator. 42 divided by the square root of 45, and then divide again by the square root of 73. And I get the cosine of theta is 0 0.7328. So theta is the inverse cosine of 0 0.7328. And that is 42.9 degrees. So that, that agreed with my situation here. Now, let's do another one. But I'm going to take my vector v, and I'm going to make it over here like this. So now my vector v will keep the same u. Notice this angle now is greater than 90 degrees. So just wanted to show you what happens if the angle is greater than 90 degrees. So we do the same thing. Vector u is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, x, 3 in the y. Vector v is negative 9, so we go negative 9 plus 4. Okay, the magnitude of u, same as we got last time, square root of 45, 36 plus 9. The magnitude of vector v is the square root of negative 9 squared plus 4 squared. 
So negative 9 squared is 81. 81 plus 16 is 81 plus 16 is 97. So it's the square root of 97. U dot V is 6 comma 3 dotted with negative 9 comma 4. 4, not negative 4. So you get negative 9 times 6, which is negative 36, plus 3 times 4, which is 12. So that's negative 24. Except I can't multiply. Let's try again. Negative 9 times 6 is 54. So it's negative 54 plus 12. So that's uh, negative 42. So the cosine of the angle theta is going to be equal to, it's, it's u dot v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So u dot v is negative 42. The magnitude of u is the square root of 45. The magnitude of v is the square root of 97. So plug that in your calculator. So anytime u dot v is negative, then the angle is greater than 90 and less than 180. If u dot v is positive, then it's between 0 and 90. Okay, so negative 42 divided by the square root of 45 divided by the square root of 97. And I get negative 0 0.63. So theta is equal to the inverse cosine of negative 0 0.6357, and I get 129.5 degrees. So you see it is. So you don't have you don't have to do any thinking. It, it works out automatically because if the dot product is negative, then you get a negative cosine, I mean, the, you get a, the cosine of the angle will be negative, which means it's going to be in the second quadrant. First quadrant cosine is positive, and the second quadrant cosine is negative. So it, it falls out automatically using your calculator. And the answer is always going to be between 0 and 180, so you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about a negative answer. You don't have to worry about something greater than 180. It's, it's not just going to work out. Okay, so that's that's how you take a dot product, and that is how you calculate the angle between vectors. So what we're going to do now is look at this case. This is the application. How do we find, how do we take a force and break it into components that are parallel and perpendicular to an inclined plane? This is, this is a very common thing that we do in physics. So we have the weight, which is pushing downward towards the center of the Earth. But we like to break it up into a component that's parallel to a plane and that's perpendicular to a plane. And this process of breaking it up into components that are in certain directions is talking about finding the component of one vector in the direction of another vector. So let's look at it where it's configured a little bit differently. We have vector u, which is at some angle with respect to vector v. Now, the vector v doesn't have to be horizontal. It's just horizontal in this case. So that does, just because v is horizontal doesn't affect the general nature of the result of what we're going to do. So if we, if we can find the angle between these two vectors, which we know how to do because we just learned how to do that, and then uh, what we're looking for is what is the component of vector u in the direction of vector v? So the component of vector u in the, vec in the direction of vector v is this dot dashed line. It's the same direction as vector v, but it, um, it's longer because what you're doing is you when you make, break something up into components, they're always the, the 
the two components are always perpendicular to each other. So this would be one component, and this would be the other component. And the, the requirement is that they're perpendicular to each other. So because of that, if I have the direction of this side, and I have the length of this side, and I know that these are perpendicular to each other, I know that this projection, which is actually this vector here from, from the starting of u horizontally to this point that's just below the vector u, that's going to be involved the cosine of the angle. If I have, if I have the length of this vector, which is the hypotenuse of this right triangle, and I have the angle theta, then the adjacent side is just going to be equal to, so this, this projection is going to be equal, the length of the projection here is going to be equal to the magnitude of u, which is the hypotenuse, times the cosine of theta. That's because the cosine of theta is adjacent, which is the projection over the hypotenuse, which is the original vector. Well, you can see that I can get the cosine of theta between these two angles by taking the dot product and dividing by the sum of the magnitudes. And I can calculate this as well. I can calculate, I already know what the magnitude of u is. So this is another example of how you can find the projection when v is not parallel to the horizontal direction. So here's my vector v. This is my vector u. The projection of u onto vector v, we, and we show it as PRO, J for projection, of vector u in the direction of vector v. So that's what this little part is. It's going to be related to this equation, which we'll formalize in a second. This other component, this other side, which is the side that's perpendicular to v, that is the component perpendicular. This is the component parallel to v, the same direction as v. This is the component perpendicular to v. And then that would give you the two components that make up this vector u, the two components that are in the direction of v and perpendicular to v. Now, to get this side of the triangle, you take vector u and you subtract this projection and that gives you that. So to find this side, you just use some vector algebra. You take one vector and subtract another vector. To get this vector, you, you, um, we can find the, the length of it using geometry like this. And the direction of this vector is going to be equal to the same as the direction of vector v. So if I find a unit vector in this direction, if I know the length and I know the unit vector direction, I can multiply those together to get this projection, the actual vector. This gives me the length of the projection. The actual projection is involves finding the unit vector associated with v, which is easy to do. It's going to be the mag it's going to be vector v divided by the magnitude of v. So we kind of combine those two things together and we end up with this result. So to take a vector u and break it up into two components, one in the same direction as another vector v and another perpendicular to that vector v, you do the following. To find the projection of the vector u onto vector v using the formula this one. This is the component vector in the same direction as v. So this u dot v over, let's see, if I, let's see if I derive this thing. Yeah, I derive it on the next side. So here's here's the equation. I'll derive it on the next page. So the actual equation is you take vector u dot with vector v, you divide by the magnitude of v, vector v squared, and you multiply it by vector v. So this in the parentheses gives you a scalar, and then you take that scalar and multiply it by vector v. That gives you a vector, gives you this vector here, the projection of vector u in the direction of vector v. And then to find the vector perpendicular, you subtract 
the vector in part one, this vector, from the original vector u, u minus projection of u in the v direction. This gives you the component of the vector perpendicular to this green vector v. So the way that you do this is you um, you let w be a unit vector in the direction of vector v. That's w. That's a unit vector. So the vector v, the actual vector v, is equal to the magnitude of v times the unit vector in the direction of v. So what we can do is we can replace, um, let's see which things do we replace here. So this this gives you uh, the magnitude of the projection, and this gives you the direction of the projection. And you can see that the um, yeah, something doesn't look right. Yeah, I think what I did is I'm just breaking this up. So I'm taking this original formula. That's what I'm doing. So I'm taking this original formula, and I'm saying that this vector v is the magnitude of v times the unit vector. So you can see this v magnitude cancels out with that v. This is the unit vector w. Then if we multiply by vector u and divide by vector u, we'll get so we multiply this by vector u, so you get vector u times the unit vector in the direction of the unit, you get the magnitude of u times the unit vector in the direction of v, and then we get u times v. Well, this is the cosine of the angle theta. This part right here is the cosine of the angle theta. Then you multiply that by u. This is that, the cosine of theta times u, is the is the length of this little segment and then if you take the length of that little segment and you multiply it by the unit vector in the direction of v then you get the project the actual vector projection of u in the direction of v let's just do a problem You know, the bottom line is most of you are not going to be using, you're not going to be taking physics or engineering. But for those that, that are, you will see this again, and you'll, you, you know, you won't have to know this. They'll, they'll explain it to you. Um, for the rest of everybody, it's just an example of how you can find interesting geometric information using these additional mathematical operations that you have not been exposed to. So that's kind of the motivation here. OK, so find the projection of vector u, which is this vector, onto the vector v. What is the component of vector u in the direction of v? So that's the first thing. What is the and what is the component perpendicular to v? Okay, so let's just work this out. We'll explain it as we go along. So, um, I'm trying to decide what to do first here. Well, let's first th figure out the cosine of theta. They don't ask you for this, but I'm just want to go through the process here. So you take vector u dotted with vector v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. And I shouldn't put I shouldn't put the little dot there because it's not a dot product, it's just a multiplication. So u dot v is 15 comma 10 dotted with 6 comma negative 2. And you can see I've drawn it sort of somewhat to scale. V is a little bit shorter here. The projection is a little bit longer. So if I do that, I'll get um, 6 times 15, which is 90, plus 
plus 10 times negative 2, which is going to be negative 20. So that's 90 minus 20, 70. Um, the magnitude of u is going to be equal to the square root of 15 squared plus 10 squared. So that's 15 squared plus 10 squared, which is 325. So it's a square, square root of 325. We'll just leave it as that. The magnitude of v is equal to the square root of 6 squared plus negative 2 squared. So that's 36 plus 4. That's a square root of 40. So the cosine of theta is going to be equal to 70 divided by the square root of 325 times the square root of 40. Again, let me take that little dot out of there so that I don't confuse that with the dot product. Okay, so you have 70 divided by the square root of 325 divided by the square root of 40. So you get 0 0.61394. And so theta equals 0 0.6139 uh, is equal to the inverse cosine of that. Fifty-two point one degrees. Okay. So that's the angle. So this angle is 52.1 degrees. Now, the magnitude of this projection, the magnitude of the projection uh, of vector u in the direction of vector v is going to be equal to the magnitude of u, which is the hypotenuse of this right triangle, times the cosine of theta. So that is the magnitude we just calculated up here. It was the square root of 325 times the cosine of the angle, 52.1 degrees. So let's figure out what, what, is, what that is. So you get the square root of 325 times the cosine 52.1 degrees, we get 11.07. If we actually take the square root, of, let's just find out what the square root of 325 is. So this, this is equal to 18.03. So that's the length of this projection. It makes sense because this is a hypotenuse. This should, should should be shorter. This is a 90 degree angle here. Now to, to actually find the vector, the projection of vector u in the direction of v, what we do is we multiply the magnitude of this vector, which I just calculated, times the unit vector in the direction of vector v. So let's call that W. What I'm doing is I'm doing it the long way, and then I'm going to show you just by using the equation, you get the right answer. So uh, W is the unit vector in the direction of vector V. So what you do is you take, you take vector V, and you divide by the magnitude of vector V. Well, we have the magnitude over here. So it's going to be um, 6 divided by the square root of 40 comma negative 2 divided by the square root of 40. So to find, so we're calling this unit vector w. So I take this length, 11.07, and I multiply by this unit vector in the direction of v. So the projection of vector u in the direction of vector v is going to be equal to 11.07, that's this, times 
this vector 6 divided by the square root of 40 comma negative 2 divided by the square root of 40 and I'm just going to multiply all these numbers together so this scalar gets multiplied by each vector so you have this times 6 divided by the square root of 40 so let's just come out with the numbers 6 times 11.07 divided by the square root of 40 I get 10.5 comma and 11.07 times negative 2 divided by the square root of 40 and I get negative 3.500 zero, zero. so that's this projection okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and get this formula and just use the formula. So here's the formula. You'll see I get the same answer. But in this case, I'm, uh, I'm doing it in one step instead of having to think about it. That's a nice thing. You don't have to think about it as much. I should have copied this thing, but I've already started. Okay. Okay, so it says that this also should be, I could just use this equation. So I've already got some of this stuff. I've got u dot v. So this part 70. I divide by the magnitude of v squared. So the magnitude of v is the square root of 40. I square that. And then I multiply by vector v, which is 6, comma, negative 2. Well, what you'll find out is when I do this, I'll get 11.0. No, I get 11.07 divided by the square root of 40. Okay, so let's just uh, let's just do the, all the math. So what we have here: 70 times 6 divided by 40, because the square root of 40 squared is 40, and I'd get negative 2. 70 times negative 2 times negative 2 divided by 40 and let's see if I do get the same answer so um, so 70 times 6 divided by 40 is 10.5 and 70 times negative 2 divided by 40 is negative 3.5 and you can see there I have it, 10.5, negative 3.5. So what the formula does, it just allows me to have to s skip some intermediate steps. And then finally, to calculate this other, this other vector. So this is, this is the projection of u in, with respect to v. This one is, I'll just call it, r vector r what is that equal to so all you have to do is take vector u and subtract this projection so if we go back over here you see i've got this projection I'm, i've got the projection vector and i've got the u vector somewhere here so that's u so this this r vector that i'm saying is the perpendicular component is just equal to u minus the projection of u vector u in the direction of vector v so vector u is 15 comma 10 and the projection is 10.5 comma negative 3.5 So if I subtract this, I'll get uh, 15 minus 10.5 is 4.5. And here I'll get 10. Um, minus a negative. So I get uh, plus 10 plus 3.5. That's 13.5. 
So that's the R vector. Now apparently I haven't drawn this exactly the scale, but you can see this we're talking about this vector, which is going to have to be a positive x component, a positive y component, with the y component being bigger than the x component. So I think that's what we got. So somewhere here, wherever it was. Yeah. So you see the x component is positive, the y component is positive, the y component is greater than the x component. So again, the first explanation was kind of to reason through how you came up with this same result. The, fa the last step is the same, whichever way you use to get this projection. Okay, so there's the problem again. Make sure I did it right. Yep. So you can see I got 10.5, negative 3.5. And, and then I subtracted the projection from u to give me the perpendicular component. So here's an example of where you would use this. So what you have is you have a, an object that's sitting on an inclined plane. You have the weight, which is going straight down to the earth. And you want to break it up into a vector that's in the direction of uh, parallel to the plane and one that's perpendicular to the plane. So we're going to break it up into two components. So we're going to say vector u is this vector. It's, it has a 0x component and a y component of negative 100, 100 pounds, 100 kilograms, whatever. The vector v we represent by a directional cosine, because we know what the angle is. So the unit v is actually a unit vector which is in the direction of this plane. So all we have to do is take the cosine of theta and the sine of theta to give us the components of the vector v, which is what we're trying to find the projection. We're trying to project this vector onto here. And you can see what it's going to do. It's going to, it's going to go down the plane because this one's going, you know, if I break it up to two components, I'm going to have a component going this way and a component going that way so that this plus that is the original vector. So I use this equation, the projection of u, this vector, on v is equal to u dot v divided by the magnitude of v, which the magnitude of v is 1 because v is a unit vector. So you can see what will happen here. I take um, the x component of u, which is 0, multiply it by the x component of v, I'm doing the dot product, plus the y component of u times the y component of v. That's the dot product. I divide by the magnitude of v squared, which is v is 1. The length of a unit vector is 1, u squared. And then you multiply by the vector v, this unit vector. So if you multiply it all out, you get negative 32.2 comma negative 11.7. So that is the direction of that vector. And what usually you want to know, we know, so that's, that's the direction of this vector. It has, um, so let me write this. So this is what we're looking at. We're looking for this vector here. And so this vector has a negative x component and a negative y component. So you see it's negative, negative. That is the actual vector. To find the component in that parallel, you would actually find the magnitude of this vector. But before we do that, let's, let's find the component that's perpendicular, this one. That will have a positive x and a negative y. So this one has a negative x and a negative y. This will have positive x and a negative y. To do that, we take vector u, which is 0, comma, negative 100. We subtract this projection, which is negative 32.2, comma, negative 11.7. So we take 0 minus a negative 32.2. 
So that'll give us positive 32.2 and negative 100 minus a negative 11.7. So it's negative 100 plus 11.7, which gives you a negative 88.3. So that's the that's the vector that's normal to the surface, and you can draw it like this. So this is the this is the vector that's parallel to the surface, and this is the vector that's normal to the surface. So the we have the x component of the the x component of this vector is negative 32.2. The, the y component of this vector is negative 11.7. This vector here has a positive x component, 32.2, and negative x component uh, and y component of 88.3. So those are the vectors. And I think if then what you would do in physics, you would then want to find out what the magnitude of those vectors are, the one that's tangent and one that's normal to the surface. So you would take the x component squared plus the y component squared, take the square root. So that's there's the vector parallel to the surface is 34.2 units, probably pounds or kilograms or newtons. And the one that's normal to the surface is 94.0 whatever units of force you have. And most of the time in physics, we want to know what these magnitudes are. Now, just want to show you, if you take the magnitudes of these two ones, these are both perpendicular to each other. If we go back to the original expression. So these two vectors are perpendicular to each other. If I take this squared plus that squared, I should end up with the original magnitude, which is 100. And you see that's true. If I take the magnitude of this vector, 34.2, and the vector magnitude of this vector, 94.0, and I square those and take the square root, I end up with 100. OK, we're going to skip over that stuff. And now here's another example, which is a bicycle crank. And um, I'm applying a force with my foot. And the force is not directly down. It's at some angle. So I've got some toe clips on or something like that. So this force vector has a positive x component of 20 and a negative y component, a, po a y component of negative 100. Then I've got this crank, which is at an angle of 40 degrees. And what I want to do is I want to see what the component of this force is tangential and normal to the crank. So this, this is my vector u, basically. And this is my vector r, or my vector v. So I want to have a component that's parallel to the crank and one that's perpendicular to the crank. So the one that's um, the projection of f in the direction of R is the one that's parallel to the crank, and the one that's this one is going to be perpendicular to the crank. So to find the projection of, of the force F in the direction of R, which is this one right here, what we do is we take the force vector dotted with the, again, in this case, the directional cosine vector. So it's going to be the cosine of 40 degrees. It's 40 degrees between the horizontal and the crank, and the sine of 40 degrees. So that, that is a unit vector that's in the same direction as this r. We don't really need to know the length of the crank to break this force up into the components. So this one's going to be the parallel one, or tangent. So this, well. Yeah, which one's tangent to the crank? I guess this one's really, tr this one's tangent to the crank, and this one's normal to the crank. So the projection of vector f, the force vector, in the direction of vector r, all we have to do is we need to, in this case, 
f is u. So we need to find, we need to take the dot product of these two vectors first. So we need f dot r instead of u dot v. So we take, it's going to be 20, the x component of f times the cosine of 40, which is the x component of r, plus negative 100 times the cosine of the sine of 40, 40 degrees. So let's plug that in the calculator and see what we get. 20 times the cosine, oops, turn my calculator, 20 times the cosine of 40 is 15.32 and negative 100 times the sine of 40 is negative 64.3 or 28, I guess, if I carry out two digits. So 15.32 minus 64.28 is negative 48.96. So that's the numerator, negative 48.96. Then I divide by the magnitude of V, which in the case, this case, V is R, so that's 1. And this thing's supposed to be squared. So I get 1 squared. And then I multiply that by my vector v, vector v, which in this case is r in our terminology. So that's going to be the cosine of 40 comma the sine of 40. So let's multiply it out. So you take negative 48.96 and you multiply by the cosine of 40. So you get the vector negative 37.51 and then you take negative 48.96 times the sine of 40. and you get negative 31.47. So this, this is the vector. This is the one we're talking about. This is the projection vector. And you can see it's negative x, negative y, negative x, negative y. And they're pretty close to each other. So that, that angle kind of agrees with that angle. So again, this is 37 minus 37. So that is the one that's normal to the crank because that's one pushing towards the center of the crank. And then to find the one that's tangential, we'll call that, um, well, we can call this F normal. So that's a normal component of the force. And then the, the one that's tangential the vector is you take your original force vector, which is 20 comma negative 100, and you subtract this normal vector, 37.51 comma negative 31.47. So you get the x component, you get 20 plus 37.51, so that's 57.51, and then you get negative 100 plus 31, negative 100 plus 31.47, so that's negative 68.53, and that would be uh, this vector, because this this force vector is down this way, so you're going to have this plus that gives you that, and you can see it has a positive x component and a negative y component, which is what we get. And just to 
to demonstrate this thing again, if we take if we take the magnitude of f, the original vector, that's equal to the square root of the two components, 20 and 100. So we get 20 squared plus negative 100 squared. And I'm going to just plug that in the calculator. And I get 101.98. Now, if I find the magnitude of the normal component, that's going to be equal to the square root of negative 37.51 squared plus negative 31.47 squared. Plug that in the calculator. And I'll get 48.96. And if I get the magnitude of the tangential force, that's the square root of 57.51 squared plus negative 68.53 squared. And I get 89.46. And then if I take 49.96 plus 89.46, I square those, add them together, take the square root, it should be equal to 101.98, 48.96 squared plus 89.46 squared. Take the square root and I get 101.98. So this whole process of, of breaking vectors up into different components, ultimately they end up being the same final vector. You know, they all end up being this final vector. You can you can break them up into lots of different combinations. Let me just let me just kind of draw it here. So, you know, here's the, here's the original vector. And let me just break it up into a couple of different examples. I could break it up into a component this way and and then one this way. The key thing is that these always have to be 90 degrees apart. So this would be a component one direction. This would be the component perpendicular to it. I can do the same thing another direction. Let's say I wanted to break it up into one like that, and I keep draw I draw this to the point where if I go perpendicular, these always have to be. Oh, that's actually wrong. So let me do it again. What I'm looking for is a vector in this direction, and it has to be long enough so that there's a right angle between this and the other part of the projection. So this would be, again, this angle has to be a right angle. We'll do, we'll do, we'll do one more here. Let's, go, let's say we want one that goes like that. So we're going to have one that goes in this direction. And then you'd have this vector. And again, you see that these two are perpendicular to them. So these, this original vector can be can be broken down into two components in any direction. So the, you, you pick the first direction, and then you make the second. You make this long enough so that the second vector is perpendicular to the first to get to back to the same endpoint. That's kind of the whole idea here. So I think that's it. So I may do a few more examples. I know that you're going to, this is not, uh, you know, it's it's pretty intense as far as what's going on here. So um, try your best. Do the homework. And, uh, you know, once you, you're going to, it's going to require some practice to be able to do this pretty decently.